Good morning. You guys are having a nice Sunday. I've got a few people to thank before I get started. Um, first off, I've got a couple birthdays to announce. It was my dad's birthday last weekend, turned 63. And it is my mom's birthday today, turned 64. It's the Beatles' birthday. We got it at the Beatles collection. It was uh, pretty good, if I might say so myself. But, uh, I don't know, the sermon kind of felt like where I am in my life right now. So, my entire life, I really planned what I was going to do. When I was a senior year of high school, you know, I, I kind of, it's where you kind of decide what you're going to do for college. It's simply, you really kind of no other option than being a teacher. It just kind of felt right. When went to a good college for teaching, got a really good degree that would look really good as a high school math teacher. And at that point in my life, I kind of, I planned everything really down to what I did during the weekends, kind of what I'd do. I, a little bit of flex, but not, not really much. And kind of towards the end of college, I decided to take a trip. I wanted to travel, so I picked something that one of my buddies had taken. It's kind of a safe, safe bet. I knew it was going to go well. It seemed like the, the good way to go. But little did I know that all this planning was going to leave me over 4,000 miles away in Europe without a plan and happier than ever. So let's just go for that. So the summer before my senior year of college, I took a trip to Poland. Um, to fulfill this, this kind of longing for international travel. The trip started out in Warsaw. It's the capital, largest city of Poland. Um, and we, we kind of t- took sightseeing. It was kind of more of a touristy trip in that part. We did some work as well, don't worry. But this was more of the touristy part of it. We went sightseeing. We had kind of a few long spans where we could do what we wanted to do as college kids. They did give us some flexibility. Um, but during these one of the few long spans, one of a couple of friends and I, Felt like we should explore the western end of the city. Didn't really have plans to go there with the group, so we thought it'd be a cool place to go. Um, it's not really as historical, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, so we took a, a map, one internationally enabled cell phone that had about 50% battery. We had bus passes, and we headed off into the town we barely knew. So upon exiting the bus, we kind of step out onto the street, and it kind of just hit me right there that we weren't going to be able to get through it with this plan. wasn't going to cut it. We had a few places circled on the map, but we didn't really know the city. We didn't even really know the language. No one really spoke Polish. We could say hello, thank you, order a beer. That was pretty much the extent of our knowledge. So we, we headed off, and we wandered around for I don't know, like eight hours, explored a bunch of famous buildings, got a bunch of food, drank a little bit of beer. Um, and by the time the sun was setting, we, we figured we might as well head back to the hotel, see what everyone else was doing, what they'd done with their day. I know a lot of people napped. They're the ones who didn't sleep on the flight over. So I kind of realized at this point we didn't really have a way to get home. We'd missed the crosstown bus. Um, couldn't really speak. We couldn't really find a cab very easily. And we just spent the last two days walking around the city doing all these walking tours, and that was about the last thing we wanted to do. So we kind of gave in to the fact that we were in this unfamiliar territory, didn't really have a sure way to get home, so we kind of just turned in the closest place that had things to drink, things to eat, grab a quick bite, and to figure out how we were going to get back. So we started surveying our options, kind of brainstorming. The most obvious was get a cab. Figured it out, don't worry. But it looks like, I was looking around kind of at the table, and a couple of my friends were looking kind of worried. Like, they were kind of scared about where it was. And I, I kind of asked them, like, why, why are you looking so, so scared, so worried? And they were like, we should have we pl- planned for this. Like, they were really frustrated about it. They were like, we should have planned for this. We should have figured out how to get home. We need to have all this ready. And I kind of realized that even though we didn't have a plan that day, I had a lot of fun. It was probably one of my favorite times on the trip. Um, and I was certain that, like, even though we weren't fully, how, we weren't fully sure how we were going to get home, that we'd make it home that evening, everything was going to be fine. So in addition, I, I kind of realized that by not having a strict plan to stick to, we'd end up seeing all these cool things. Like we went to the Marie Curie Museum, so it's a really nice memorial, and it's like a, it's a memorial tour, it's like a mural on the wall, really cool. Like, still my favorite picture from the trip is of that mural. And we, we saw the mural and the museum inside, and those are both really highlights of the trip, but they weren't even on our itinerary for the day, they weren't on the plan, we just kind of went off a suggestion of someone that told us. So I kind of decided on a small scale that this not having a plan was fine. And my whole idea of planning every weekend was probably a little, little far out there. So 
Now, on a small scale, this kind of made me analyze my life. I was looking at regular activities and thought about whether or not they were holding me back or keeping me from doing something that might be more fun or enrich my life somehow. Thought about my tendency to plan the small things and be apprehensive about trying new things. I tried to find new ways to push myself outside my comfort zone because that was definitely where I was when I was having all that fun in Warsaw. So even though I was trying to make fewer plans and break up routines on a small scale, I was still overlooking the biggest plan I had made kind of to that point, which was to be a teacher. So let's backtrack even further, all the way back to my senior year of high school in that AP statistics class. So I, I, I love taking AP statistics, like favorite class. And I, I took that, I, I wanted to become a math teacher. It seemed like the right thing. It seemed like a logical path. My love for math and my above average personal skills that came together it seemed like it was a good profession. It seemed like it. I tried. But I thought it was going to be my, I guess, quote unquote, forever job. Um, I was going to be in it forever. I'd, I'd spend a few years teaching in a foreign country, maybe move up north. I don't know. Who, who, who knows where I was going to end up? But I researched job satisfaction and wages all of the United States. I looked at retirement plans. I looked at insurance. <laughs> I explored every aspect of teaching, except the one that, looking back on it, was the most obvious. What if I didn't like it? What if, what if I didn't like teaching? <laughs> so in August this past year, I entered the profession with a positive attitude and the mindset that I was going to leave when I retired. So, it starts off good. So the year started, students poured into my class. And seeing their smiling faces on day one and butchering about half the names on the roll is something I remember as long as I live. Good memories. But we progressed through the first quarter, kind of slogged through the teaching stuff, the meetings, parents, students, had some fun mathematical discussions. And by the time late November rolled around and winter break started to get in the minds of my kids, uh, I began to feel rather strange as well. As they just wanted to be home. I didn't quite know what I wanted to be. I was planning on my lessons. I was happy spending most of my days kind of with my colleagues, with the majority of my students. Um, even helped out coaching some soccer. But despite this, I just wasn't feeling like this is the right thing to be doing. I felt that even though teaching mathematics to teenagers was rewarding and interesting, Something just wasn't right. So come winter break, I started to think about this a little more. And I talked about it with my friends, my parents. Talked about it maybe a little bit too much. Got a little bored with me. So I was trying to figure out what was leaving me wanting more at the end of every day. And it struck me. I was remembering all the way back to that AP statistics class. I realized that I'd, I'd seen this as a sign to teach when really it was just a sign that math was fun to me. You don't have to agree with it. Math is fun to me. <laughs> now, I know that all my teachers, my fellow teachers this past year, felt exceptional mathematicians. Um, but I realized one crucial detail I'd overlooked in my search. I loved math, and I kind of used teaching as an outlet for that love. This baffled me because I'd planned to become a teacher. How could I, the person who had this career all planned out, not be endlessly in love with what I was doing? So the more I thought about it, and that statistics class all the way back in high school, the more I realized I'd been blinded by my plan. I started to think back through college and what I enjoyed the most during my time as an undergrad. I realized it was kind of more the math stuff than the education stuff. And I went to class every day for the math and kind of got through the education. But looking back, I realized I'd been so blinded by this fact, I'd not planned for the contingency where I didn't want to teach. Then I realized it was because it didn't fit into my plan. Like, why would you plan for something if it's not going to fit in? I'd gotten so caught up with this idea of becoming a teacher that my plan for my entire life had not included the idea that I wouldn't stay a teacher. So I was left with no certain future if I was going to leave teaching, which I, I did. I, I was left with no job past the end of the school year. Absolutely no idea what to do next. First, I was kind of sad, you know. I, I had this big plan. I created it. I'd already gotten through parts of it. I'd gone to college. I got my first job. It was suddenly really no longer there. Like I didn't have this plan guiding me, keeping me afloat. I spent multiple days like, second-guessing myself and talking over it once again with my parents and friends, and they kind of... So once I came to terms with the state of my life and my uncertain future, I started to move forward, kind of accept it. A fall of the next few days was, I'd liken it to like taking blinders off or kind of just, just seeing the world in a whole new way. I wasn't focused intensely on being a teacher, and I could see other things that I might enjoy. This life plan that I no longer had shaping every decision was just kind of like, wasn't there anymore. 
I was pulled in all different directions. I felt like I could do anything. While staying grounded in what I love, mathematics, I researched different careers. I was a professor, researched like modeling, sports statistics, everything that had to do with math. And I kind of felt like whatever I picked would be a whole new adventure, and I didn't have to do it for the rest of my life. I'd already gotten through my first one. I mean, the next one doesn't have to be the rest of my life. I'd like it to be a little longer, maybe. Longer than eight months. That'd be real nice. But uh, this new way of thinking left me a little lost, a lot nervous. I was also really excited for what lay ahead. It's kind of what's out there. I tell this story not because I want you to go quit your job tomorrow and reevaluate your life. But because sometimes we get locked into a plan or a way of thinking that can leave us missing so many opportunities. By locking myself into teaching, I funneled all my efforts into obtaining a teaching degree, with that being the only outcome that was acceptable. I looked past my infatuation with mathematics and somewhat less enthusiastic attitude towards education and pushed forwards to the goal I had. This tunnel vision on becoming a teacher led me to look past obvious signs that I wouldn't be happy in the long term. I convinced myself that this was what I was supposed to do and anything else just wasn't right for me. When in fact, what wasn't right for me was what I was pushing so hard to become. Now once I started seriously trying to figure out what to do, I kind of just felt less pressure to find a job that I was staying forever. I no longer scrutinized retirement plans or insurance, or thought about fewer than a few years into the future. I started taking my life, my career, and kind of just how I thought. It's kind of one step at a time. I began to look at what other plans I've made in my life found that I had a predetermined idea of what I was supposed to do for way longer than seemed practical. Blocking myself into hobbies and life choices for longer than, I mean, I thought I really should be. A few short weeks, I went from having all the way to retirement planned out to barely having the next few months planned out. Honestly, it felt amazing. While changing careers is not a new thing to many people in this world, it is something that still leads to some thought. My generation, the millennials, are said to have about four career changes by the time they reach their mid-30s. While I knew I probably wouldn't stay a high school teacher forever, I never thought I would be already on to my second career before I was even a year out of undergrad. But even though I was uncertain of my future, I felt as though it's all going to be okay. Everything's going to work themselves out. And I didn't really feel the pressure I felt when I was originally deciding my career path. I'd already finished my first career. I'm sure my next one was going to be even better. Trust me, it will. I don't know what it is yet, but it will. But being able to set this goal of teaching, achieve it, and realize it's not all I, I kind of cooked it up to be in my head was something that was really new to me. I'd come to terms with the fact that my original plan wouldn't fully work out, and I was okay, okay with subsequent plans not working out as well. In addition, I was able to have a positive outlook on the other side and not let the fact that my plan wouldn't work out be something that affected my future and made me scared to have any other changes. When I realized that I still had a future, my life was intact, and I was still fine, there's new exciting options out there. I kind of just felt a little better about it, like everything in general. Uh, how was I supposed to know what I wanted to do for the rest of my life when I was barely old enough to vote? Like, I'm 18. When I was still, well, now I still have a decent idea of what I want to do. I kind of know general direction. But I'm no longer planning 20 years down the road when I just graduated college last year. The parity and balance between having a plan and not being able to shut out all of their options it's still something I'm getting used to. While I still, plan, make, I still have plans to make a kind of a daily and weekly kind of routine, um, I still have the ability to change it and make, go do fun things if they show up. Um, looking towards the future, I know I have some idea of what I wanna, where I want to be, what I'm trying to get to, kind of where, where I want to go, but I'm no longer ignoring other options as they come up, I'm not really just kind of blowing by everything. While living in the present, I found that there is not just one well-defined path to life, but a field where one must, find, one must find their own way. I've come to think of life as a quilt where each piece makes up a larger whole, but no one piece will make up the entire quilt, each piece sewn in place by the impact and memories it left with me. I realize now that while I may not have ended up where I thought I would be, I enjoyed the journey that brought me there. I realize that I am a wiser, more knowledgeable person because of what I have done, and that's what's important. It's not important that I'm not going to be a teacher until I'm in my 60s. What is important is that I tried it, and I'm better because of it. I didn't let my plan not working out turn me into someone scared to make a single change in their life. And by changing my plan, I realized that I don't need to have the rest of my life mapped out. Now, John Allen Palos, really cool guy, wrote a bunch of books. He's an author, he's a professor of mathematics at Temple, 
I've read math and psychology stuff by him. He says, uncertainty is the only certainty there is. And knowing how to live with insecurity is the only security. As I've experienced this fundamental shift in my mindset and my career change, I realized that being uncertain about where I would be in 20 years was fine. Today I ask you to look at your own plans, goals, and aspirations, and think about them. Are you stuck living out a plan that keeps you from seeing all other possibilities? Do you feel as though there's only one option for the future? I challenge you to try something new, get uncomfortable, and have some fun with life. Besides, if I can get lost in a foreign country and change my career just a year out of school, maybe everything doesn't have to be so concrete, and maybe certainty isn't always a necessity.